deal you offered? I'll take it. Griselda Blanco, who had no biological connection to the Ochoa family, was reportedly the largest female distributor for the Medellin cartel. Even though it was difficult for Griselda, a woman, to enter the mafia family's inner circle, she was nevertheless able to leave her own legacy. Growing up in the horrifying era of La Violencia, Griselda experienced sexual abuse at the hands of her mother's boyfriend when she was just 13 years old. A few years later, the woman left her mother's home and entered the prostitute industry, where she met Carlos Trujillo, her first husband, and made friends with a number of other women. The Netflix series introduced three prominent women from Griselda's past, namely Carmen Rivera, Isabel, and Carla, who are all fictional characters based on several sex workers that Griselda used to work with. While there is no hard evidence to prove that any of Griselda's friends owned a travel agency named Coral Gables, Griselda did learn the art of document forgery and transporting illegal immigrants from her first husband. It could be deemed that three important characters, featured in the Netflix series, including Carmen, were based on these Colombian women, who later became state witnesses and testified against Griselda in court. As per the police reports, both Carmen and Gloria, whose real names were Ampro and Gilman Atahortua, respectively, wanted to see their kids, which was why they cooperated with the D. In return, they received visas for their families and a shortened sentence of seven years in prison. Other than these two women, there is nothing connecting Carmen, Isabel, and Carla to their real-life counterparts, but Carmen's character does play an important role in Griselda's downfall, which we want to explore further. Why did Carmen become a state witness? June Hawkins, a key member of the CENTAC 26 task force, raided one of Griselda's stash houses so as to force the godmother to take impulsive actions against her men and give the police an opportunity to arrest her for her crimes. After the raid, June found out that it was Carmen's company, Coral Gables Travels, that had rented the property under a lease contract, which gave Miami PD enough evidence to put Carmen behind bars. However, Carmen, being an intelligent woman, knew that June was bluffing and she could easily evade the charges, yet something happened that turned her against Griselda Blanco. I want to bring up the horrors of Griselda's past once again to establish the fact that the root of Griselda's sociopathic tendencies and paranoia was a childhood incident when her mother's boyfriend f***ed her. Griselda never forgot the incident, which was why she kept fighting against the monsters in the world, which were embodied by the controlling men in her case. From time to time, the Netflix series explored Griselda's stance on feminism. She had killed her first husband, Carlos Trujillo, because he was abusive to her. Alberto Bravo, on the other hand, had sold off her dignity, which compelled Griselda to take the necessary action against him. Even though Dario was innocent in this case, Griselda's paranoia and PTSD over her past experiences took the wheel. In her pursuit to find and kill the monster, Griselda lost her way and eventually became one. Knowing Griselda inside and out, Carmen wanted to be there for her closest friend and prevent her from sinking beneath her own anguish. At the height of her career, it was the ideal time for Griselda to leave the criminal underworld and live out the rest of her days in a remote area of the globe. Griselda had shown the patriarchal afterlife that a woman could, in fact, govern hell with elegance. However, one cannot fly too near to the sun without burning up into ash. Griselda was ignorant of the fact that knowing when to retire and step aside with dignity is a sign of a genius. When Carmen finally told Griselda that Sentak had seized her property and threatened to arrest her, the self-centered godmother, instead of helping her friend in need, suspected her of being a mole. Carmen was inactive for the time being, but when Griselda shot Chucho Castro's young son, Carmen knew that it was time to put an end to Griselda, or else the monster in her would burn the entire city to the ground. Soon after the tragic shootout, Carmen stepped into the Miami PD's office and became a state witness. What happened to Carmen after her arrest? Like her real-life counterparts, Carmen Rivera was unable to produce any incriminating evidence against Griselda, despite having accepted the DA's offer and turned herself in. Griselda did not receive the death penalty or life in prison as a result of her testimony. Carmen was not aware of Griselda's hundreds of deaths or part of her murdering rampage, just like in the real-life events. 
Like the other girls in her gang, she was solely in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the cocaine sale, enforcers such as Jorge Riviala handled the more illicit aspects of the company. At the end, Carmen was offered a short sentence in exchange for her testimony by Miami police and placed in a witness protection program. It was most likely that after spending her time in prison, Carmen went back to managing her travel company to live a peaceful life thereafter.